Thank you very much for coming. Um, first thing is, as we had already uh, 20 minutes with um, Frédéric to discuss about Société Générale, he has a bit of advance on you, so uh, I don't give you 20, but if in two minutes you could present who you are, I think you are a banker also somewhere in your life, uh, and what is Atom Bank, because we are, many people here are French, even if we are 40% non-French, but they don't all know who you are, so please take sure. two or three minutes for that. It is the story of competition in banking that, that the big established bank gets 20 minutes and the new bank gets two. No, no, we have 25 <laughs> minutes together, don't worry. It's a, it's, it's a useful <laughs> metaphor. So, so Atom Bank is a, a small new bank. Uh, it was established in, as a business in 2014. It, uh, it was licensed as a bank in uh, 2015 and unrestricted, in other words, trading, uh, just last year. Uh, it uh, has started lending and gathering deposits, uh, so lending to small businesses and lending to residential mortgage customers in the UK. Um, and we continue to build our capabilities so that we will offer a full range of, of, of banking products and services, either manufactured by us or partnered with us uh, throughout <coughs> 2017 and into 2018. It's uh, distributed principally using uh, smart technology or smartphones, um, but we also have partnerships with a variety of, of broker groups in the UK. So that's who we are. When I met you the uh, first time a, mo a bit more than one year ago and when I, I pushed you to come, um, you explained to me we're not like all many neo banks we're speaking at this time because from the day one you wanted to be a real bank with your balance sheet and so on. I mean, you didn't really believe in the light banking thing. Is that, could you just tell us a bit more about there are so many neo bank things, you know, so many different. I think there's a, a great deal of uncertainty. If you're going to raise capital from investors, and we've raised a lot of capital. How oh, much, sorry? About, uh, to date, we've raised 135 million pounds. Of course, the pound has devalued significantly. So, Until yes, a few weeks ago, it was good. <laughs> Until a few weeks ago in euros, it was looking good, but now it's looking a little less good. Um, by the time we, we get out of quarter one of this year, we'll have raised uh, well over 200 million pounds. So it's a lot of money from investors. And if you're going to raise a lot of money from investors, then you have to uh, have a credible plan to give it back to them. And I know that sounds terribly obvious, but when you then look at the uncertainties about how the fintech world will evolve, what will monetize? Will customer behaviors change? Will they trust their data to unknown companies? Will they buy from unknown brands? A huge amount of uncertainty we wanted to ensure that we had a firm foundation to our business. And a firm foundation to our business was actually quite a traditional model. Go out and gather deposits and, and create a spread on a balance sheet by lending them to businesses. So, so to that extent, we're a hybrid. We're not apologetic for being a hybrid because the future is very uncertain, but the need to save, the need to borrow, buy a home, finance a life, pay for education, those are constants and we wanted to be attached to those needs and those opportunities as part of our strategy. Last question before we go to the real game. Um, before creating that, because we all have white hairs, so you're just, I'm not 22 creating, it's just after the school, like Oli yesterday, so um, you were a banker before, I mean. You yes, it is very unfashionable to be a banker, but I am a banker. I spent my entire career in banking and financial services. I have always loved the industry. Again, you know, stone me now that I think it's a fascinating industry. I think it's an important industry. I've always believed that. I think it has, a, has done a terrible job of explaining itself to people who vote and people who pay taxes. I think it's behaved badly at various different points over the last 15 to 20 years. I would like to say I wasn't in it, but I was. So uh, you know, in, in the UK, there's a, a gamekeeper turned poacher, which is a, you, know, you leave an industry and then you attack it. To some extent, I do that. Um, but of course, I'm, I'm part of the, of the banking industry. I, I won't deny that. Thank you. So now for the next 15 minutes, the game will be very easy. I will ask exactly the same question, question to both of you, um, which is focus on retail, Frederick. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you both have different experience, different, of course, reality today. Um, so main question is, what is a bank, retail bank of the future? I don't know what is future, two years, 10 years, five years, I don't know. But I will ask you this question. So we have seven or eight questions like that. Uh, the first one is, is there a space for branches? Um, yesterday, Orange CEO explained on the very same stage uh, that for Orange, the distribution network is an asset. And on the opposite, um, we see, at least in France, 
uh, many branch closure in, in, in some banks. I must say I had a Société Générale in my street. I don't have any more since six months. Um, so do you think, and, and you, you are mainly mobile, you don't have branches, or perhaps you have some deals you will explain, but do you think there is like 20 years ago this discussion, click only, click on motor, uh, or it will be only click? Both of you, so first uh, Mark, because you are just arrived. 